welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to unbox and swatch and get some first impressions of the 50 pastel tint pencil set. I kind of hesitated on the 50. It says 50 plus, but from what I understand, there's actually only 48 colors. I guess we'll find out when we swatch. Um, now you can get these in the metal tin. I bought the canvas case bundle and let me show you why. So I'm going to slide this off. For one, I just wanted a case because, well, I didn't want to buy another one. So the castle art cases are made pretty cheaply. Like it's already got strings everywhere. I mean, they're not made very well, but there's going to be either 48 or 50 pencils in here and I'm just like, I don't want to combine a case or buy another one. So two birds, one stone. Okay. So I did pre-sharpen these. We'll look at the pencils in a minute. See all these strings just everywhere. <laughs> it's just like falling apart. Okay. So first things first, it is 48 pencils according to this. So this packaging is very misleading because it says 50 plus. Um, but I think they're counting all the extras you get, but then they should just say 48 pastel tint plus what you get, my opinion. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is this swatch card. This is, oh, hi Scout. This is actually really good paper. Um, I'm going to swatch on it. Most of the time, you know, they send like cheap you know, printer paper. This is actual cardstock that is pretty close to my Nina 110 and it's smooth. So yeah, we're going to use this little thing and it fits inside the case. So as usual, um, they have sent their pamphlet. All Castle Art products come with this, talking about everything they offer. The only thing is now this huge thing. So normally what they do is they have all their colors listed and then a little thing here at the top. So this little guide here at the top tells you what you can get in what type of pencils. Um, now, one thing that caught my eye was tinted graphite water soluble pencils. So I was kind of looking for the gray square and I don't see it. So I am thinking this is something that they're going to come out with soon, kind of like Graphitint. It's definitely not, I'm not seeing the gray square. If someone else finds it, it's like, where's Waldo? But, and then they also tell you what comes in the watercolor paints, tubes, oils, gouache, etc. And then they also um, have their gold range of pencils, woodless watercolor, their watercolors. I haven't tried their watercolor pencils. I probably never will. And their metallic pencils. They did come out with the metallics, which are actually kind of a combo factor. Now, this is where it gets hard. Their metallics are a red square. Colored pencils are like an orangish red. <laughs> so... Um, you might get confused, but this here is actually the metallic set over here. So don't think any of these are metallic. So they have a whole metallic set here. I didn't buy it, but here are the pastel tints that they have added. Very pretty colors. Um, when I do the review or maybe even today, you know, what? I got my swatches here. I'll compare them to the Holbein's. Um, and the pastel lows. Now Holbein has a 50 count set of pastels and pastel lows are 50 count and the colors are practically the same, uh, freakishly close. So let's see if these offer like a little more variety. Uh, this just talks about the castle club. And then this is a huge pamphlet just about the pastel tent pencils, including, you know, say you wanna, you know, color this. You can download the templates, by the way. Um, it says right here, you can download this template from the Castle Arts website, so you don't actually have to draw it. But yeah, just some tips on how to use these ones. They show you like um, colorless blenders, burnishers, white pencils, what you're going to get. And the cool thing is they actually have a mixing chart already in here telling you what you're going to get when you mix these. Um, 
So I just did a thing with watercolor mixing and I was explaining how when you go diagonal, that's the pure color and then everything else is the mix, but they're kind of showing you like, hey, you could take this and make colors. I'm lazy, but, and then here is like, you know, their color wheel. So if you're kind of curious, if you're wanting to do work off the color wheel, maybe you're not comfortable picking colors. They even tell you how you can pick out these colors, but Bottom line is, I mean, you can go across and across, you know, like so you could get this candy tuft with a rosa or a petunia pink, or you can just go next to one another. I mean, there's so many ways, but yeah, it's pretty in depth compared to their old um, pamphlets that they used to send out. And then this is just talking about the Snow Queen one, how to create it. This shows all the 48 colors. And yeah, this is the Snow Queen in more depth, right down to the colors. So, okay. And then also in the bundle that I got, I got a black sketch paper pad. These are all A5, um, 135 GSM, 20 sheets. So pastels always look cute on black paper. And then white cartridge paper sketch pad, also 20 sheets. 130 GSM, so it's not bad. Not, like, amazing either, though. <laughs> um, and then we have a Bristol Board Paper Sketch Pad. Now, this is 250 GSM. I might play around with this, but Bristol and I don't tend to get along, so, you know. Uh, one thing I am going to do, though, is use this lovely pamphlet as a backing for my swatching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look at the pencils real fast. Let's get a color that you can see. So one thing I noticed immediately is they have changed the entire design. Um, the other Castle Art pencil, you know, had the color dipped in, but it was black. These honestly, when I first saw them online, I was like, well, these look like the Astra Pastel Lows. Like, so it's almost as if they're trying to mimic that style and even kind of like have a Holbein-ish appeal because they changed the entire look of it um now it does have the color name so carnation and a color number whereas pastel low you're on your own um castle arts and pastel tint and yeah so they're all in the case i already sharpened them but here you go see so this is pretty easy plus it's like a, a little case once you get all those pads out though it kind of sits weird but I could just slap this in here, take it on the go. So it's kind of nice not to put it in one of my bigger cases, but I want to see what these colors are about. And from what I could tell when I was sharpening, they were in order, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom in <laughs> so you can see. Um, this is Orchid White. Always start with those colors that you're like, I can't even see. Ooh. Now, Castle Arts, you guys know I'm not a big fan of Castle Art. They've never been my thing, but I am doing Tales of the Forest Kingdom and all pastels. So I'm really trying to collect a variety of pastel pencil brands and colors. And the one snag I'm getting into, so now we're on Mimosa. Oh, so we're out of order. <laughs> Well, all right, let's find Petunia Pink then. Look at that, guys. We're going to be putting this in order. I just sharpened these as they came out. So the pinks are back here. Enjoy my big arm in the way. What on earth? Okay, Mimosa. Where's even Mimosa go? Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> so the the chart goes this way <laughs> that's uh interesting okay so anyway what was i saying before i confused myself because i was like i swear these are in order like the numerical order looked great oh um okay so i'm not a i i want to collect all the pastel pencils but the problem i'm having is all the shades are the same so i got the astra pastel lows but the shades are so freakishly close to Holbein's that I honestly, I just felt like I bought cheap Holbein's. Um, so I was like, well, that was a waste. Um, 
Now I do have my Black Widows, which have a ton of pastels in them. Not just from Marnark. Over the years, they actually have snuck in some pastels. <sighs> so I've been using those, and those are a great one. Um, but yeah, I'm just collecting pastel pencils. So leave in the comments below if there's some pastels you've tried that you like. But I'm doing this entire book in pastel pencils, so I need variety, and I can't just keep using Magnolia. The same colors like I want to be able to combine multiple sets and have a full range I have been using my Felicimos because there are tons of pastels in the Felicimo set so I've been using those um, my 520 brute funers have quite a few pastels but I'm waiting till my art studio is done so now we're on Rosa because I just don't want to dig through those <laughs> Um, so I'm waiting until I get like the big case that I'm going to put them in and then we'll, then we'll go from there. So yeah, let me know if you have seen any pastel sets that have some unique shades. Um, the Felicimos have been kind of more of my go-to because I have quite a few uh, pastels from just that subscription. In fact, my last box had quite a few pastels. Almond Rose. Yeah, we'll compare these to the Pastel Lowe's um, because they are both budget. I think the Pastel Low actually is cheaper, even with the whole ordering it from, was it Denmark? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's Poland. Um, but yeah, they're still cheaper. Petunia Pink. Now, these feel soft right now. Well, this is kind of how Castle Arts roped me in. You know, I swatched all those lighter pigment colors, and it's great. And then I got past the yellows, and I was like, oh, these things are scratchy. So um, one thing to keep in mind, though, pastel pencils will always be a smoother pencil, and that is because there's not a ton of pigment. It's a lot of white, so you're going to get a lot more soft feeling to an, a wax-based one. Coral blush. You know, I mean, just eyeballing it, these might have some colors that the pastel lows don't. There's a big debate right now on whether pastel lows are wax or oil, but the site says wax, so I'm rolling with that, and they feel like a wax. Blushing rose. So if I could combine these with those, and then any other sets you guys recommend, I could possibly finish that book. A bunch of watercolors and pastels um i actually just did a video i don't know when it's coming up but i recorded a video transforming 12 normal pencil watercolor pencils into pastel colors so keep an eye out for that amaryllis Ooh, i'm liking these pinks already I'll probably get this review out pretty quick compared to like other brands where I take months. Um, and that's only because I have so many pastel sets. It's going to be easy to compare. And I'm actually itching to dye or uh, itching, <laughs> itching to dye. That yeah, hmm. <laughs> I'm itching to dive in to my Tales of the Forest Kingdom and color another page. Um, so burn out on fall colors that I just want to do a whole bunch of pastel fun. So I'll probably color a few using this and I can review these maybe even before the end of the month. <sighs> Foxy Glove. All right, and we're on peach cream. I wonder why they did it this way. We got some um, colors you could use for a Caucasian skin tone, that's for sure. I mean, all that. <laughs> snow waffle. Is there such a thing as a snow waffle? Or is this just something my kids would make and present to me and I'm supposed to eat it? It's a very pretty pink. Very light. Very subtle. These aren't too dusty like the normal... Um, Castle art, but again, like I said, pastel colors or any light shaded colors don't have a ton of pigments. So they're always going to be a lot softer. 
When you get in those dark greens and blues, you're like, ayo. Some more skin tone colors. Uh, cream rose. I would not call that a rose. I wouldn't put rose in there. <laughs> Cream-ish. I don't even think I would call this a cream. The orchid white is more of a cream color or even magnolia. Interesting name choices. Don't you love my big arm in the way? <laughs> apricot twist. See, but it's not even the color of an apricot. So we need to, Castle Arts and I need to have a chat about color names. I don't know about you guys, but I tend to get really like critical of names when they're misleading. I just picture a color in my head, so when it's not that color, I'm like, oh, candy tuft. It's like a nice greenish, cream, creamish green. Is that a thing? Hmm. All right. And we got Inca Gold. Sorry if you know the tapping. Um, the house a few doors down is being framed. Like, big monster truck <laughs> drove by with just tons of, like, framing. You know, like the huge, I don't know, those triangular things that are basically holding up your roof. They're in my house somewhere. Begonia. Yeah, they dropped that off, so I knew it was going to be a loud weekend. It's funny, I'm sitting here swatching 48 colors, and tomorrow I'm going to be swatching 320 markers. Now, this will post after that, <laughs> but you'd think I would give myself a break this weekend for diving into that. Cowslip. Okay. It's a very pretty green. I just don't know. So they do have PT at the end of their numbers, just so you know, it's part of the pastel tint line. Oh my gosh, I would love it if there was, is there such thing as just like 150 pastel colors? I mean, I know I could make 150 pastel colors, um, at least with my watercolor pencils. Give me a white and give me a set and I will make you a whole array of pastel paints. So I know it can be done. <laughs> Works the same. Just mix in some pigments before you slap them with all your binders. But just curious. Let me know. Like AliExpress, anywhere. I'm, I am itching to just get a ton of pastel. And by pastel, I mean pastel shades, not actual chalk pastels. So please, guys, um, let me know. I saw some from Sergeant Art, but I'm curious, um, not Sergeant Art, uh, Stadler, if those are what are just pulled from ErgoSoft. Um, I'm going to try those Indra macaroons. I should go on AliExpress today and see if there's, like, any pastel sets. And then by the time I collect them all, I'll be like, oh, okay, I'm over this. <laughs> But I can't pace myself. That'd be silly. All right, Savannah. Look at these greens. These greens are gorgeous. My nails are, these are so springy and beautiful and I've got these fall nails right up in there. It's good contrast. But I am impressed with the swatching paper they sent because most companies literally, it's printed on the world's crappiest paper. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not even like create space level paper and create space. I mean, it's not that hard to beat. Lime coral. This is almost neon. Could work. One thing I like when I'm doing swatching and first impressions is eyeballing. Okay, what can I use for combinations? Because that's the hardest thing with these small sets. Like, am I going to be able to create any combos? This is Jasmine. When I'm coloring in my Hannah Carlson. Uh, my biggest bummer is Hannah Carlson paper takes oil-based so much better. And I'm only finding wax-based pencils. So 
That is one issue I've been running into. This does not seem very pastel. This is a lot more neon. See, that one's very scratchy too. Not as scratchy when you roll back over, but it's still pretty scratchy. Verdi. Yeah, these are very bright. These, these greens here, I actually, I don't call these pastel in my head. Ooh, look at that though. It's still a very pretty color. Angelica. That's a nice green. I like that one. So I am seeing some colors that are definitely not in the pastel lows, so we could probably do some combining, which would be stellar. Bayberry. I want to do this one huge double page spread in Tales from the Forest Kingdom, but I'm going to need a really good selection of pastel colors to pull that off. So I'm going to have to have like my pastel lows, the pastel tints, my black widows. Um, problem is they don't combine very well with Holbein, so the Holbeins have to sit off to the side, but I mean, it's a monster double page spread. I need some color variety. <laughs> But I've thought about sitting down and working on it. See what I can make out of it. It's pretty blue. They call it jade, but it's not really a jade green. Periwinkle. This is definitely not a periwinkle either. It's also very scratchy. Hmm. I mean, that was my problem with Castle Arts in the beginning, just the scratchiness. Now, I did buy the bundle, so this costs a little more. If you just go buy the tin, they're not too badly priced. Delphinium. They are a little overpriced right now, but it's, you know, the whole latest and greatest markup. Um, so if you're on a budget, I'm going to tell you right now, just wait a little bit and then buy these. Don't buy them right away. Um, now I bought the bundle because I wanted to see what the paper was about, but also I wanted the case. So that was why I did it that way. Blue Poppy. I'll link both in the description below. Um, if you want the case and like the little bundle I did, um, or if you just want the tin. Like it'll be fun to play around with the paper, you know, draw something. Or I might just give the, paper, the little sketch pads to my daughter. <laughs> Blue Daisy. I just, I honestly just wanted the case. Um, if, if we're being 100% honest, the case was what I was going for because I was like, oh, at first when I bought it, I was like 50 colors. Oh, I don't want to, what am I going to combine that with? You know, my pastel lows are still sitting in a box. I guess I could put them all in one case together, but then I was like, it would be so nice. I could just pop this in my purse because it, it thins out quite a bit once you take all the junk out pop it in my purse and while my son's doing taekwondo just color or something my daughter's gymnastics all my kids have sports starting that require me to just sit there <laughs> too far away to just drop them off and come back um kind of one of those things you could drop them off and come back but you'd like come home for like 10 minutes so it's like well, what's the point lobelia lobelia that's a bright blue like a sky blue well that more sky this one's pretty scratchy though i did have a few people um in fact a subscriber asked if i would review these i honestly didn't even know these were out I don't follow Castle Art releases because they're not my fave, so I was like, you know what, I'll try them though, because I'm on I'm in the market for pastel pencils, so I bought them. And I was really surprised that they changed the look. Now these all are in numerical order, meaning they're not skipping any numbers. So I'm gonna go out on a limb, Luxpur. And say it's unlikely they're going to expand the line. Um, everything is in fairly decent color order here. So, pr 
probably unlikely that they plan to expand this line. You should never know. Pastel pencils are becoming really popular. Um, that's why there's just so many brands popping up. And it was actually good and smart of them to hop in on that. Because they are a budget-friendly one. You know, whereas in the U.S., there's not a ton. Especially with a, a brand name that you trust. There's a bunch of random ones, but you're like, are these garbage? <laughs> so, they were smart to get in. Heather. But I was impressed at the um, this cardstock here. I really was. Not too bad. I'm just getting a couple scratchy ones. But then when you go back over for that next layer, they're building up nice. You can feel the wax. But the pigment, the pigment is what's really important here with these pastel colors. Because some of those cheaper brands... The pastel or the color doesn't come out very well. Um, you know, it's got just so much white and it's so waxy that you just, you don't get a really good pigment out. Um, even with like 50 layers, you're just like, ah! And by then you've got too much wax buildup, you're not going to get anything. Tickle pink, oh. Uh, that's why I've been enjoying the Felicimos because the pigment is wonderful. They just pop right off the page. But yeah, these aren't too shabby. Really enjoying that. Okay. Camellia. I do find it interesting. We went back to purple and purple pinks. I think they should have thrown them over there, but that's just nitpicking. But yeah, I'm not going to buy the metallic set. I rarely use metallic pencils, just to be honest. I like metallic paints for accents, but pencils... I was given my daughters um, out of any set. Like the 520 Brute Fooners had what, like 12 of them? I can't even remember. Jelly Bean. But I was just like, here he goes. And handed them all over. It's just not my thing. Sometimes I'll save a bronze or two for wood grain, but outside of that, I just have no use. Except my Holbein ones. I did keep the Holbein ones, but that's because they were so ridiculously expensive. I'm not giving that to my kids. Pearl. Ooh, that's a very pretty, like, vintage-y. In fact, my vintage pastel paints from Prima Marketing have, like, pretty much this exact color. It's gorgeous. Actually, so yeah, I like that color a lot. Okay, now we're getting to the two grays. I'm just going to pull it up. Winterberry. I'm thinking this is a cool gray. How it's laying down. Looks like a cool gray. Not bad. Not bad at all. A little dust, but that's also I'm heavy-handed. Peach Rose. Okay. I mean, there's a hint of peach. This kind of goes along the lines of the other one that they had all weird cream rose. This is definitely a warm gray. I'm just going to call it that because that is not a rose color. Okay, let me grab my Ast Astra Pastel Lowe's. Oh, wow, words are hard today. But uh, let me zoom out just so you can see. All those pretty colors. I mean, very good array. A couple of them are a little, little bright, but I mean, it's okay. When you put them all together, it's not too much. Great range, though. Um, definitely, you could do some lighter skin tones. No, you couldn't do anything dark. But let me grab my um, pastel lows and see what we're competing against. Okay. So I actually have my combo chart. Um, this is the chart that I made with the um pastel low up top and the holbein equivalent at the bottom so let's see what we've got so orchid white is just a little bit lighter than ivory mimosa is pretty close to cream saffron is pretty close to naples yellow rosa might be in a class of its own. Okay, so Rosa is fairly unique. Do I have a pen? 
<laughs> I kind of make like a little dot with the smaller side though. I'm going to make a dot next to the ones that seem to be a little different. Almond Rose is pretty close to flesh, but not quite. So let's give that one a dot. All right. Um, Petunia. Ooh. Petunia is just a little bit lighter than Apricot, but they're really close. Coral Blush. That one's more pink. It's pretty close to salmon. And Blushing Rose is pretty close to coral. Amaryllis, though. Yeah, that's that one's unique. I'm not even seeing anything close to that. Foxglove. Okay. Foxglove is actually pinkier. So Foxglove is unique, too. Peach Cream. That one is really close to shell pink, but just a teeny bit lighter. Snow Waffle is going to be a, a unique color. Carnation. This is good, guys. We're actually picking up some unique colors. Carnation also, because it's not quite Ash Rose. Cream Rose, which I still got problems with that naming, but whatever. Cream Rose is really close to sand, I would say. Apricot Twist, I think, is going to be... It's not quite like peach, so that one's unique. Candy Tuft. Yeah, Candy Tuft is definitely its own color as well. Inca Gold is pretty close to mustard, but see... That is just, I mean, it's closer to the Holbein mustard, so I'm not, I'm going to leave that as not unique. Okay, um, Begonia. Let's get down here with these greens. Nope, not quite. Cow, cowslip is really close to that one, though. Um, ooh, yeah, Begonia is pretty close to Willow. All right, Sunflower. Yeah, it's, it's sunflower. I'm going to give it that one because it's not quite like the olive green. Now, juniper. Closest thing would be lime green, but slightly lighter. So I'll give them that. Um, Daylily. Actually, Daylily is closer to that one. Then cowslip. But it's got a little bit more, hmm, I'm on the fence with that one. All right, Savannah is really close to the mint green. No, nope, I say it's closer to misty green, so it's not very unique. Okay, lime coral, though, well, is really close to lettuce. <laughs> Jasmine is a little bit brighter than the chartreuse, but not by much, but we'll give it to them, I guess. Green flower. That is, oh, I think we're pretty close. Yep, yeah, it's pretty close to the cobalt green. Ver, uh, this uh, Veridi is definitely like the jade green. Angelica. Angelica is really close to the mint green. Bayberry. Is also pretty close to that misty. Not, not this. Yeah, it's pretty close to the misty green. So I, I would say. All right, jade. <sighs> jade has a nice blue to it. Yeah, I'd say jade's pretty unique, actually. Okay, periwinkle. Mm -hmm. And this is just a prelim. I'm actually working on a project with pastels that I hope to get done soon. I'm going to give Periwinkle to them. Delphinium. Mm, is really close to ice cream. So we're going to... Blue Poppy is really close to Horizon Blue. Blue Daisy. Ooh. 
Yeah, Blue Daisy is pretty close to, I would say, the Forget-Me-Not, but Blue Mist is pretty close to Lavender Blue. Uh, Lobelia. Let's see. Lobelia is a lot like the Aqua. Blue Bell. Blue Bells. I need to punch holes in these so you can just overlap it. Um, Blue Bell, though, doesn't seem like it's on its own. Larkspur is really close to the Sax Blue. Hydrangea. It's pretty close to that Smalt Blue, but just a little bit different, so I'm going to give it to them. Heather. Ooh, that's really close to the Wisteria. Um... And then their wisteria is really close to lilac. Tickle pink is kind of in between this mauve. Well, you know what? It's really close to that rose gray. And then camellia is really close to cosmos. Jelly bean is freaky close to fuchsia. Pearl. Oh. Pearl is a lot like sea fog. Winter berry, a lot like the cool gray. And this peach rose is almost identical to the warm gray. So, if we're talking unique colors compared to Pastello and Holbein, because Holbein is on this chart, by the way, it's a lower level. I've gained in my adventure of finding more pastel colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I've gained 14 more colors on top of the 50 I have. So now I'm at probably about 64 colors. Um, not bad. So yeah, a lot of these, when I first swatched them, I was like, oh, they're so different. But then when you pull them up next to the chart, you're like, they're not. <laughs> so that's a bummer. The only thing is, Castle Art are going to be a lot easier to get your hands on than the Pastel Low. Pastel Low, you got to wait to ship from Poland, although you can also get them on Amazon Germany, I believe. Um, the Pastel Low are pretty cheap. None of these are open stock except the whole wine. Now, you're going to be spending a fortune to buy these set of 50 Pastel whole wines, though. Um, that said, they are an oil and wax combo, whereas Pastel Low pastel tint or wax based. Interestingly enough, pastel low is 50 colors. Pastel tint is 48. Um, but yeah, we definitely have some overlap. That said, you are getting some unique colors too. Now, if we're looking in terms of blending opportunities, we've got some good ones. We've got some colors that I'm just like, what are we doing? This Inca gold, honestly, ugh, just ax that. That shouldn't even be in there. Um, but I I'm liking these vintage -y purples and pinks. But some of these are going to be, like, these are really close to one another. They could have totally swapped for something there. But, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see some combos, but they're going to be pretty basic. So if I want to be, like, traditional, I'm going to have two and three color combos. Or I'm going to have to get a little kooky with my combos and start like, you know, blending my blues into some oranges and, um, which is fun. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. So this is the 48 pastel tint pencils that come in the case. Uh, if you don't have a case, I recommend doing the case one. Um, I'd have to double check when I go to link this, if you can get the case without the whole bundle, but if not, you just got some sketch pads, like, and they're not too bad. I mean, the GSM on these is pretty decent. And if you're into card making or scrapbooking, just repurpose them. <laughs> so, or give them, oh, oh my gosh, my kids' stocking stuffers. See, look at that. I've already, like, knocked out some Christmas stuff. So, yeah, guys, Um, overall, I, I'm still impressed. They're softer than the traditional castle art but of course that is because you know they are a pastel little gem here but these aren't awful um by any means they're a budget pencil you know and if we're trying to compete against the glorious holbeins you know power to them for that one <laughs> so 
yeah, I mean, I'll let you know in my review soon. I'll do a page with them in Tales of the Forest Kingdom very soon as well, since that's my pastel set. And then let me know in the comments below any pastel sets that you have tried that you think would give me more variety than what I've collected so far. So until then, guys, take care.